Welcome back. In my last video, I talked about my transmission popping out of reverse and how I was gonna replace it with an AX15. So I ordered the transmission, I ordered the bell housing. I've almost got all the parts that I need. So I wanted to show you what I've got here. I removed the cardboard, but otherwise this is exactly how the transmission came. Got a shift knob here, five speed, no vac, it's billet aluminum. I don't know if I'd mention that, but Novak is where I bought this transmission. Advanced adapters also sells one. There's some paperwork. Let's see, we got just general. They've got some automatic stuff in here, and so it's just a generic instruction packet. And looks like my receipt. Let's see, here's the shift lever. It's straight, so I think the intent is for me to bend it to my needs. There's a jam nut for the shift lever. This thread is actually 3 8 uh, 24 threads per inch. So a little bit of an odd duck, I think, um, as far as shift knobs. I know there are shift knobs that are that size, but the TJ was uh, an M10 by 1.5, if I remember correctly, and then some older models. I think if you go back far enough, maybe the YJ or CJ were 3 8 uh, 16 threads per inch. Unveiling the transmission. Voila. Got a plastic cover over the, the tail. Uh, it's got another plastic sleeve over the input shaft. Um, the shifter actually had a plastic sleeve over it, or just some like a plastic bag covering it. I've already taken that off. So as you can see, it is legit brand new. Factory markings here that I can't read. Uh, that's the original Chrysler part number, the 5210-8118AB. I think the shifter is different, the top half right here, because the original one had a groove uh, machined around the perimeter and the shifter actually popped down and had a, like a spring-loaded detent that would grab on and hold it. And so that's probably why this new shifter is provided. Uh, it's actually got a set screw. There's the vent right there in the shift tower. I'll probably do something there to where I can hook up a hose and uh, run the vent up the firewall or something up high. If you're familiar with Toyota transmissions, you can compare this side by side and see, at least from the intermediate plate forward to the bell housing, it's almost, I mean, it looks like the same casting to an R-series Toyota transmission, like an R-151F or an R-150F or uh, any of those four-wheel drives. The, the tail here is different because um, it bolts up to a different transfer case. This is the advanced adapters bell housing that I got. Obviously I've removed all the packing material <laughs> right there in the pile. Um, but just to go over what was in the package. So it's got this sheet of instructions. They're pretty generic. Um, just kind of talks about the application, uh, dowel pin alignment stuff. It doesn't go into the level of detail that a factory service manual would, so I would recommend supplementing uh, this with the factory service manual. I also went ahead and printed off the factory service manual page for installing the bell housing to the transmission. So this is the hardware kit that came with the bell housing. Got the pivot ball here, the release lever, the release bearing, I guess this is the clutch throwout spring. I've never actually done a clutch on a TJ before, so I'm not that familiar with all the parts. Uh, so the pilot bushing is what I'm missing. 10 millimeter by 1.25 by 30 millimeter socket head cap screw. So I've got those, there's nine of those. That's what holds the bell housing to the transmission. I've also got nine of these inside star washers, so nine and nine, I'm assuming that those are used there. I don't think the factory bolts used any washers, um, but I guess a lock washer can't hurt. That would kind of suck to have those bolts back out inside the bell housing. Um, then I've got, let's see, these three here. So those must be for the dust cover. Nut, three eighths. 16, I think that's also for the dust cover. 
and then these I believe are they're 5 16 18 by inch and a quarter for the slave cylinder and then this quarter inch 20 by three quarter that's the bolt for the crank sensor and last but not least I do have a clutch kit to go in it actually includes the pilot bearing so I'm not really too worked up about the bell housing not having one and it has the another throw out bearing too so then I just got to decide which one I want to use fortunately all those parts were common for the entire run of the TJ so I don't have to do any shenanigans like matching a 99 clutch disc to an 06 pressure plate or anything like that I think that's the location for the crank sensor there's also a look one over here on the side so obviously one of these is for the 05 and 06 and one is for the 04 and earlier and i'll probably figure out which one's which when i get it apart on the parts drawing there's an opening that took a grommet uh, that was used on the bell housings up to and including the nv3550 uh, i went ahead and bought one but this bell housing i'm not sure has that opening it says something about a timing port i don't know but i may not need it so let's go ahead and put on the bell housing the transmission has a couple of dowel pins that line it up there we go these are m8 socket head cap screws and there's nine inside star washers so i'm assuming those go with the nine bell housing bolts i'm still going to use blue loctite i don't really trust red in aluminum Torque spec on these is 27 foot pounds. I'm using my beam type torque wrench because my clicker, I don't really trust it that low. It's like a, it's a half inch torque wrench. It's, uh, I bought it to do stuff that's like 200 pounds. Clutch release fork pivot ball. My clutch is really squeaky, so I'm kind of thinking maybe lubricating some of these sliding points might be a good idea. I don't know if there's a particular technique to putting this on. Yay! There we go. I think that'll do just fine.